looks like a checkered book. I don't want to waste. And it was already. This is what it ends up keeping my room clean. Hello friends and welcome back to another pop-up shop vlog. We are hitting the ground running and just getting right into preparation for the upcoming pop -up shop. I already have my candle warmer going, all my fragrances are laid out, all of my vessels are prepped and ready to go, and we're just gonna start making things. If you don't know me, my name's Monica and I make content about working nine to five, owning small business, productivity, lifestyle, and all those fun things. I also love doing pop-up shops for my small business. My small business is called Monica's Collective and I make handmade goods, all of which are sustainable like candles, original apparel, earrings, scrunchies, and a whole bunch of other things. My next pop-up is in six days, which is coming up very quickly. So I need to do a whole bunch of last minute preparations with making a few more pieces of inventory, going through all of my like vendor booth materials and things of that nature. If you didn't watch my first pop-up shop of 2023 video, I definitely recommend you go and watch that because I did a whole lot of prep work in that video or those few videos. And now I'm kind of just like, like filling in the spaces where they're needed. I already have a good amount of inventory made, but at my last pop-up, I realized I sold out of a bunch of different like scents for my candles. So I want to go hard on those and make a bunch more of those candles. Same with scrunchies. I'm way low in inventory of um, earrings. I need to even decide if I want to continue having earrings in my shop. I'm not sure if that product accurately like represents my brand and what I'm trying to like go for. So need to decide on that. I want to make a whole bunch more empowering decal cows for people to put on their mirrors. There's a good amount of things to do and I want to show you the process of preparing for a pop shop. I don't want my videos to come across as too repetitive so I want to change some things up here and there. I do want to make a new product for this upcoming pop-up shop and hopefully I get around to doing that but we do only have six days <laughs> until the pop-up so we'll see. The pop-up that I'm doing is so exciting. It's the Hoboken Arts and Music Festival which is my favorite festival, my favorite market to do. It's the very first one I did ever a couple years ago. It's what convinced me that pop-up shops are like my passion <laughs> and something that I really love to do. It's this really big market here in Hoboken, New Jersey where they close down a big portion of our main street called Washington Street and they just have craft vendors, food vendors, um, nonprofits, a whole bunch of different booths set up for people to walk through the street and check out. It's on Sunday and today's Monday, the Monday before the pop-up and I cannot wait. But I also want to be as prepared as possible so I'm gonna do some inventory prep right now. As always, I start with candles. So I have everything set up over there on my desk. I have my vessels down here on my other desk, um, just waiting for me to pour everything into there. So yeah, that's what's going on. Let's just get right into it. I hope you enjoy this video. While my candle wax is heating up, I thought I would talk to you all for a bit. Today is Monday, May 1st, by the way, and I'm starting to feel the summer vibes. This time of year is especially tough because I want to be outside and like doing things, um, but sometimes I just have to be in here making my pop-up shop stuff, which I can't complain about, obviously. It's also the end of the workday, if you're wondering. I work from home on Mondays. Um, I do have a 9-to-5 job that I do full-time, and... I just like kind of do all of this on the side and after work and mostly on the weekends and things of that nature. But after work, I do get pretty tired. So I like to go for some sort of pick me up just so I have enough energy and like stamina to continue working on my side hustle things. So what I've been having lately is Magic Mind. 
I've talked about them before in previous vlogs last summer I believe I like got really into them but I'm still going strong it comes in this little box which is so aesthetic and they're basically just these little matcha shots the little bit of matcha in these gives me a good boost of energy to continue on for the rest of the day i like having these as like an afternoon pick-me-up i know some people will have them in the morning in replacement of their coffee or matcha or in addition to it but i personally like having them in the afternoon because i find that it's like a fun little thing to take i just down the shot <laughs> and it just like keeps me going other than matcha there are a bunch of other really cool ingredients in here which help me in so many other ways there are adaptogens which help you relax and deal with stress one of the main adaptogens in here is ashwagandha, which is used in a lot of Ayurvedic medicine, which I've been recently very into. There's some turmeric in here, which is anti-inflammatory, which we all love. There's lion's mane, which has a whole bunch of antioxidants in it. There are a lot of studies linking lion's mane to treating depression, anxiety. It has nootropics, which keep you focused, which is definitely something I need after working 9 to 5. And then it also helps with immunity because it has vitamin C, vitamin D, and a whole bunch of other good nutrients. So this is what the little shot looks like it's so cute and it tastes delicious like apart from all those other good things in it it just is very yummy so i just shake it up a little bit because all the good stuff like sometimes gets clumped at the bottom um and i like sip it kind of slow because i'm bad at shots <laughs> and i don't mind sipping it because it tastes really good um so that's just like how i prefer to take it but it's not like a ginger shot where it burns on the way down it's very easy and smooth and tastes delicious i once made like a latte out of this a matcha latte and that was also really good but recently i've just been liking taking it like on its own so if you guys are interested in trying highly recommend magic mind gave me a code to share with you all so you can find that in the description that'll get you a discount off of your order i love receiving my little 15 pack in the mail because it's just like i love seeing these in the fridge it's the cutest thing they also have like the cutest instagram but yeah if you're looking for secrets on how to keep going after work and to like keep up your energy this is this is what i use okay as i continue to sip this let's make some candles so one of my new obsessions these crackers so yummy It is the next day. I just got back from work. It's 6.48 right now and I'm going to do a little bit of perfecting of the candles that I made yesterday. They are all still sitting down here and I just gotta get my hair dryer out, perfect the tops, the ones that need a little bit of perfecting. Um, I'm going to try to label all of them tonight because I just want to like get these done so that tomorrow and 
Thursday. I think Thursday I'll have more time to get into some newer things. I also have this little mason jar filled with earrings that are like half finished um, or there's something wrong with them and I need to fix it up. So I'm thinking about finishing these up and then having that be it with the earrings that I do. If you didn't watch my previous vlogs, you might not know, I'm thinking about discontinuing earrings because I haven't really liked making them too much um, like recently and also I use polymer clay. A lot of it was secondhand that I found at thrift stores, but some of it I buy new and it's not the most sustainable thing in the world. So I'm trying to phase that out. Maybe one day bring in more like eco-friendly earrings. I could find charms at thrift stores and like turn them into cute earrings. Um, but until I find cool things like that or ways to make earrings a little bit more sustainable, I think I want to stop making them <laughs> and bring in some other new products that are a little bit more eco-friendly but obviously i don't want to waste these that i already have half done so i think i'm going to try to get these done for sunday I know I still owe you guys a dedicated video on how I make candles and especially how I make my candle tags or my labels, but let me give you a quick overview of what I do. So I make all my tags, why do I keep saying tags? I mean my labels in Adobe Illustrator. I hope this is coming off clear. But here's some sample tags. In Illustrator, you have something called artboards, which are these white boxes right here that look like pieces of paper. And the artboards are 6.75 by 9.25 because that's the print area or the cut area that a Cricut cuts in. Um, so I set these artboards with those dimensions, 6.75 by 9.25, and then I fit as many labels as I can onto the artboard. So for my 8 ounce candles, I can fit three. For my mini candles, I can fit a bunch. And then my bigger um, candles, I can also fit six. So this is what it ends up looking like, and I can export each of the artboards into its own file. And then once an artboard is exported onto my laptop as a regular like PNG file, I can upload it onto the Cricut Design Studio, which is the application you use to use your Cricut. It ends up looking like this, and I need to resize this to be the correct dimensions. So like I said, the cut area on a Cricut mat, which is this guy right here is 6.75 and 9.25. So when I resize it, it ends up looking like this. Actually, wait. Okay, that's the proper size. So it just looks like this. And I can click make it at the top. 
that's what it'll end up looking like. So this is my regular piece of sticker paper. I'll link below the sticker paper that I use. Um, and this is how it's going to print out. I sized everything appropriately in Adobe Illustrator so I don't have to worry about resizing anything on this page. And I just continue and I send it to my printer first. So I click send to printer. I open it in my regular system dialog. I'm sorry if there's a really bad glare from my light, by the way. And I always use best settings or best quality and specialty paper matte. And then I go ahead and print that. And that ends up printing right away. So my printer's going right now. And then when it's on printing, it looks like this. It has the black lines on every corner. Um, and now I just put it onto my Cricut mat. On the mat, you want to line this up with the corner of the mat. There's like... A white line you can kind of tell so you line it up there this part i always find super difficult for some reason and i can never get it exact but it usually ends up okay i'm using my little squeegee looking thing i don't know the exact name of this but it comes with the cricut um like tool set and i just push it down so that there are no air bubbles and it looks like this and then i feed it into my cricut so to feed it in, you just align it with the two edges of the machine and then this light's blinking. So you click it and it grabs onto the mat and now it's ready to cut since the little Cricut button is lit, lit up. I have my machine set to iron on because my needle is blunt right now or my uh, razor is blunt. So I should really just get a new razor, but <laughs> for right now, um, this is what we're working with and this gives me the kind of cut where it just cuts the top part of the sticker paper and leaves the bottom part of the sticker paper intact, uh, which is what I want. So yeah, now I just click go. Okay, and that means it's done when this button is blinking. So I click it, it unattaches the machine and I can grab it. And now to take it off the mat so that I don't get any creases on my paper, I always lay it flat. I lay the mat flat down like this and I peel off part of the sticker paper and then I just peel the mat off the paper instead of the paper off the mat. And I find that this way, it makes the paper not curl as much or crease, so not much curling or anything. And now the little stickers are cut. So no cuts on the back side, just the front. And this time I make my labels. I could talk a whole lot about how I even design the labels and how I come up with ideas and what tools I use in Adobe Illustrator. So that's gonna be for a different video, I think, because I have a lot of stuff to say about that. All right, let's continue tagging these candles.
All right, guys, it's Thursday. I didn't really talk yesterday. I don't think I talked at all yesterday while I was making earrings, but I finished all of those up. I just made all the ones that I like pseudo had done. Um, they were all baked and some of them already had holes drilled into them. Some of them already had the backings already on them. I just finished up the ones that weren't done. Here they are. They look cute. There aren't that many, but these were the ones that I still like the colors of. Um, because some of them I didn't really like the design anymore or the design were messed up or things like that. So I have a few like flowers. These ones are really cute. Unfortunately, I only have one of these and basically like one of a lot of them. These I have a few of. These are my favorite. Well, the white ones. These ones are definitely my favorite. But today I am going to make some mugs or some cups. I didn't bring out my little glass cups with vinyl on them at my first pop-up this year. And the last time I had them at a pop-up was in September of last year. So I'm excited to bring these back. I have a few of them on my website right now, but not like all the different designs. So I'm excited to make a few more. Here's an example. It's just like a checkered design. Some of them have flower designs. And I got two new color vinyls in um, last night. So I'm going to check those out. It's a really cute pink and green color, I believe, or blue color, I don't actually remember. So I'm gonna make those. I'm also gonna make a few more Hoboken tote bags because those sold really well at my last Arts and Music Festival. Um, so I gotta cut those out in my Cricut and iron them on. And I think that might be it for tonight because low-key, I'm tired. But I've done a really good job keeping my room clean while prepping for this pop-up, which is great because I feel a lot more motivated to actually do work and I feel like more on top of things. So pro tip clean your room and keep your crafting room really clean even while you're preparing for craft shows because it could potentially just make your mood a whole lot better and you end up being a lot more productive guys i just can't believe how tired i am this going into the office stuff is like it's really no joke i just started using a fresh new cricket mat for those of you who use a cricket you know this is like the best feeling ever i use black heat transfer for my hobo tote bags um, I get this off of Amazon. I'll link it below if you want to know the brand that I use. Um, but I really like it. So much better than the actual Cricut HTV low-key. I like how this has a matte finish and it peels off really smooth. I've never had any issues with the amount of time that I heat it for with my heat press. It's really crazy because when I used to do the Arts and Music Festival, the first couple that I did, I would be so stoked to, to the point where I would be like really nervous <laughs> to actually like, do it and now i've done the arts and music festival in hoboken so many times that i'm like kind of used to it which i mean i shouldn't be used to it because they could reject me at any point in time i definitely felt like i had a good amount of imposter syndrome the first couple times that i did the arts and music festival because i used to go to this festival when i was in college and just walk around and buy things from the vendors i did that for five years while i was in college and then after college when i started doing them as a vendor i was like this feels wrong like i feel like i should be walking through and buying things like the other customers not being a vendor but now that i've been doing it for a good amount of time i'm like i feel more comfortable being a vendor than a customer it's like a pretty cool feeling
took today off of work today because I was feeling like having a little personal day. I also wanted to go to the fabric stores um, during the actual day and on a weekday instead of the weekend so that it'd be a little less crowded and I can look a little bit more freely. But it was actually really crowded still. I went to VNJ Fabrics and Mood Fabrics. Mood was like packed. I'm thinking it's because it's May and this is around like finals time for students. So I'm like maybe a bunch of FIT people and like Pace and all those other like artsy schools all have like final projects that they need to do. I did manage to get a few things. Some things for this pop-up that I'm really trying to get done. We'll see if it ends up happening, but I'm hoping. These two. So pretty. This one's just a cotton fabric and this one's actually also cotton, I believe. I want to make those pouches, the quilted pouches that I've been mentioning for the past like who knows how many videos, um, but I don't know if I'll make them quilted or just box pouches. I'll put like an image here of what I'm going for. And then the linings, I just got some like satin, polyester satin. So I have these for that. Like this is literally the saddest thing ever. I don't have the right zipper sizes. <laughs> I want to make these pouches so bad and I've been teasing them for so long and I just can't get around to doing them. It's so frustrating. Um, so I'm going to not make these pouches. I think instead I'm just going to make some more candles. I got to finish those Hogo Kinto bags. I got to iron on the actual vinyl. I just weeded it out yesterday. <sighs> this is so frustrating. I was even thinking, I was like, should I grab some zippers? I was like, no, I have a ton of scissors. Scissors? Zippers. Gosh. Okay, well, I'm going to make something else now then. <laughs> All right, here's a little update on what I've been doing. I finished putting some of the vinyl onto the extra glasses that I had. This is an old design. It was already done, but I just put the paper, like crinkle paper on the inside because I think that could look nice. I'm not sure. I'm like still deciding. I've seen other people put crinkle paper inside along with a little like um, instruction sheet on how to wash it. So I just made all these pink ones. It's like a really light pink. I don't know if that looks bad with the crinkle paper. This is what it looks like without the crinkle paper. Hmm. Maybe I should put less. That'll be better. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday. It's the day before the pop-up, and I don't have much to do today. This is the strangest feeling because it's never happened to me before, but I've prepared so well, Loki, <laughs> that the day before, I really just have to do the finishing touches of packing everything up into the bins. Like, I don't really need to put any tags on anything or, like, do any of those other last minute things I normally do. I just need to make sure my bins are perfect, which they mostly are. They're already out there, so. How wild. We've definitely come a long way with this whole pop shop experience, uh, for me at least. And I know that I've helped some of you based on the comments. I, like, see a lot of you, like, taking my advice and... Um, doing pop shops for the first time and it's so nice that you all watch my videos and take my advice and are trying new things and it's really heartwarming. I obviously don't know everything and I'm still learning as I go and I appreciate that you're all here for my journey to just like be the best pop-up shop vendor ever. <laughs> because it is a Saturday, I do have a good amount of free time to dedicate to my small business so I might actually make some things and create inventory but not for tomorrow before like a pop that I have the following weekend, which I'll talk about on a different vlog. Um, so I have some candles set up here, just the like fragrances and the uh, vessels behind them. And then I still have all my mini ones here too, or most of my mini ones. So I might actually go ahead and start making things um, for a future event, which is really crazy. I almost never dedicate time to future events if I know one is coming up a lot sooner. But I feel so prepared and it's like, it's a really weird feeling. <laughs> okay, I'll catch you when I'm doing something fun.
I decided to fill out my giveaway spin the wheel because during the actual pop-ups when I'm setting up, I never prioritize doing this. So I thought I would just fill it out ahead of time. Some of it might rub off because I do need to pack this into my bins, but I can just like easily rewrite some of the words that get rubbed off. Um, which is much less of a task than coming up with all of the freebies. I always have trouble because I don't want to give away things for free because I'm not in a position to do that <laughs> yet, but I do want to give people some sort of discount. So I put things like buy one, get one candle 10% off, which like isn't that bad. Buy one, get one decal 20% off, um, $1 off your entire purchase, free sticker with purchase. So like there's some pretty good things, um, but also... I feel like these deals are like fair to me as well like i don't want to be like giving away free candles i can't do that yet <laughs> i just got this in from amazon let's see how it looks basically just it's basically just these acrylic risers to display different things so here are like the samples they give you um the shoes are so funny um but yeah, I'm thinking of like raising my candles up and like having them a little bit more organized on the table. If you know my little setup by now, it's a little bit chaotic. I have candles everywhere um, in a very unorganized fashion, which I liked for a long time, but I kind of want to try something new. So I'm going to see how these look. Oh, it's fancy. It's like a little cleaner for them. Oh, you probably do get a good amount of like fingerprints on these because they're clear. I feel like this could have been sanded down a little bit, but that's just me. that's just my opinion. Oh, there's another one. Good. I was going to be like, it looks so bad, but there's actually just a lining on it and now it looks good. Okay. It's like a basic like stand. Let's see what it looks like with candles on it. Well, these are my three different sizes. I think it looks good. I think it's gonna break. If I put the heavy one there. Hmm. I wonder how much weight it can actually hold. Should I try like my three big ones? I feel like it might fall. That does not seem stable. I feel like I should return it. <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, these are fine. I just have my three like lighter ones. I don't know. You don't know about that. Yeah, I think I have to. I have, okay, this is not for me. Okay, I will not be linking these, or maybe I will in case like they work for some of your products, because for candles they're too heavy. But if you have little things that aren't as heavy, this could be really great, and I think they look cute. So I'll link them for you all. Okay hey guys, everything is packed up. I got my two bins here. As you all know, I have a third bin, but I ended up not needing to use it. So I just filled, I think the bottom one. Yeah, the bottom one's filled with some inventory and tablecloth. I should have really showed you this while it was open, but you've all seen all of this already in another video that I posted. So I have my earring holder and my spin the wheel the spin the wheels over here and i also like filled in all of the like freebies already in this one i have like envelopes another table cover i have my pricing and like a little mirror and like other miscellaneous things and then a lot of my inventories in these cardboard boxes so i have my glass cups and then in these three i have my candles so all of them are filled except for this top one i have a few more i need to fill in here i have some of them um, like on my bookshelf that I need to put in there. You all know I bring my tripod to film everything. Table is here. I bring that decorative bin with the um, canopy tent pieces on top. My actual canopy tent is behind here. <laughs> so I have two of my canopy tents behind there. I'm just gonna pick one and use it tomorrow. I always bring my mirror, so I'm just gonna take that off the hook uh, when it's time to go. And my wagon is in that corner. I use my wagon to bring everything over. 
It is absolutely beautiful outside today. I think it's like 75 or 80 degrees. And one of our favorite like attractions here in Hoboken just opened up. It's called Pier 13. They have a bunch of food trucks and like an outdoor bar and it's just this pier lined with turf and people sit there and hang out. So I think we're gonna go there tonight. I think I'm done prepping, honestly. And the fact that I'm done and I feel okay and like comfortable going out to dinner tonight and like going out to Pier 13 the night before a pop-up is really crazy um, and very different. And I hope that this trend continues with all my other pop-ups. Thank you so much for watching. I will be vlogging the actual um, Arts and Music Festival, the pop-up, tomorrow. And I'll put that up in a different video. But thank you for watching me prepare and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.